Hi, this is Michael Samler. I'm back again. This is part two of a two-part how to flat video. Uh, I did promise to show this is uh, the storyboard. Uh, storyboard. I have the, I'm sorry, I have Clip Studio Paint EX, which includes storyboard, which is not included in the in the more uh, cheaper version of the software. Um, so this is what it looks like. It's, it's super handy. Uh, I can zoom in and out. Um, you can also combine pages. So I just had a master file with all of the um, with all of the crop marks on there. And then you could uh, automatically merge the ones that you decided to make double page spreads. Uh, it really helps when you're looking at the whole overall flow, especially the, the black and white is balanced, things like that. Um, so I just want to show that. I forgot to show it in the last video. Let's close that down. Uh, get to our page here. So this is the page I received. If you look at the layer in the bottom left here, um, this is how I received it. It was a Photoshop file. Uh, it's still a Photoshop file and you can use Photoshop files here just fine. The only thing, if it's not a clip, if you don't save it as a clip studio file, when you set, there's a few things. Uh, the one I remember is that if I set this as a draft layer uh, or one of these layer items, when you save it, close it, open it again, those are not saved because it's a Photoshop file. There might have been a couple other things, not, no big deal, you just when you open it, you just have to remember to reset those things. Um, so like I said, when you're flatting, you need everything uh, to be alias, no anti-aliasing. So I received this, these inks that I'm gonna work on, let's zoom in. They of course have anti-aliasing because the lines look better that way. But for flatting, we can't use that. So we're gonna save this, uh, well, let's rename it inks actually. And we're gonna we're gonna use this eventually, but we're gonna duplicate it now because we don't want to mess anything up in there. Duplicate layer. Let's name I name it bits. Name it whatever you want. There we go. Uh, inks. We're gonna turn off the little icon so we don't see it. Uh, we're gonna lock it. Bits file. You go to uh, next to layer, it should be layer properties. If that's not there, make sure you go up to uh, window and layer and layer properties right there. Make sure that's that's uh, available. That is going to be necessary here. So we're going to go, I have bits selected. I go to layer properties. You're going to change it to monochrome. That means each bit is on or off. And sometimes, like if you get uh, hand-drawn inks, it's this file won't uh, have the back, like we turn this off, we won't have this background here, it'll be white. And that's fine. In Photoshop, you'd use multiply, so that white disappears. In Clip Studio Paint, you don't have to do that. And I don't know if this is better or not, but if you do in monochrome here, and you click the, the change expression color, click on black, and if there was white there, it would just disappear. Uh, the settings here, color threshold, I never really mess with that, but alpha threshold, what that's going to do is change the amount of the gray, things that are gray, whether they go to nothing or to black. So if we move that up here, you can see some of the pixels disappearing, go back down, we see more black pixels showing up. So let's go back to layer and look at the inks again. So some of these places where the lines are grayed out, like if this gray here was touching there and we switched it and we switched that to bits, that gap is more apparent. That might make it more difficult to fill this area. It doesn't, it's not impossible. It doesn't really matter. It's just your preference, but um, it's just, that's what you're changing that setting for trying to get that gap. Uh, smaller so it's easier to fill but not making the lines look too like look too crazy like super thick or anything um, but I think that's fine usually I just keep it here and I just check a little bit um, it's more apparent when there's more cross hatching um, which you can see like down here you might notice it a lot more when you're when you're changing that back and forth see how small that gets so if you make the gaps get bigger which is better for cross hatching easier to fill but in larger areas like here, you want those gaps smaller. So you just have to balance that where you like. 
Uh, change expression color is okay. Back to layer. So our bits is now only black and nothing, which is what we want. So uh, zoom back out. Unselect. Inks are locked. We don't want to mess with that. Bits are on. You're going to make bits the reference layer and then lock it. Uh, layer one here, we, uh, I don't know what that is that came with the file, but I don't need it. So we're just going to make a fresh layer just to be sure. Underneath bits. And now we are ready to start flatting. The two tools that we're going to use, uh, I need to go my flats here and flats here. We have a bucket tool that we set up in the first video. Refer to reference is what I called it. This is black inks are the reference layer. Even though I'm on layer one here, which actually I want to rename as flats just to keep things consistent. Hey, 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 what? What's going on there? Flats. There we go. So even though I'm using the bucket tool on the flat layer, it's going to use these black lines as borders from the bits layer. Something unique to Clip Studio that makes this possible. So first of all, uh, I want the page to be white. So I'm going to select white. And now you'll see that bucket tool. Um, because follow adjacent pixel is on, it went around all those solid borders. My area scaling is off. My color margin is zero. Uh, close gap, I didn't need it right now because there was no gaps. Uh, snap to a symmetrical ruler. I don't even need that on this menu. I should get rid of it. Multiple referring was set to reference layer, meaning that we set this bits as reference layer. So that's the information it's using when deciding to put down the color. Non-reference layer, don't need it here. Uh, stop filling at center line of vector, don't need it here. Uh, what that means is, it, is the color might go under the line halfway. Doesn't matter because when we finish, we're going to erase any color underneath the black line. So there's nothing underneath the black areas of these inks. And then we're going to use the special paint tool that will take the color from the left and the color from the right and have them meet in the middle, which makes them meet under the black line, which is called trapping, in case the black lines move while printing and there's still color underneath so there's not white or nothing is showing through, which is more obvious. Uh, opacity is 100%. Do not start filling for this color is black, so this white is not going under the black. Again, it doesn't matter. I have it checked just for the fun of it, but it won't matter in the end here. Blending mode, normal, anti-aliasing, not checked. That's really important. Um, sometimes you can even turn off the inks, go and look at that line and make sure there is no gray. It's either on or off a hundred percent. It looks good. We are good to keep going. So, um, actually before I do that white, I'm sorry, before usually I fill in everything. Actually, we can just go from here. I'm going to turn those off. There's a couple ways to do this. Uh, I use just like a bright pink or something, something really obvious. So if I miss somewhere. Uh, I'll be able to see it really easy and also when I finish and I erase anything that's under the blacks I also select anything left with this pink color and erase that too so that the colors I chose will also fill in those little those little places which is makes uh, it allows the flatting to work here in Clip Studio Paint. So I'll turn bits back on we're gonna go ink I'm gonna flat um, I'll probably just flat one of these panels but I'll show you my workflow, how I, we're going to start with this lady here. Uh, let me bring up the show sub view palette. I had used this uh, import and imported uh, the previous page I'd flatted. So instead of using the color wheel, I can just grab her hair color from there. I'm going to fill in her hair here. It's not going to work. Oh, I filled too much. I set my button on my pen to toggle over to the monochrome pen where I can quickly just fill in any of these little gaps. I see here. Big gap there. And while you're doing this, this is pretty much how you were lassoing in Photoshop, but you're letting the line work do the lasso, the where the lasso would have had to done. The line works there and you can use that already. So let's try to fill that. Looks like uh, I kept that in there. Is this one here, here? 
there's a gap here got it and I'm not sure with their chin there we'll fill that in there you see these little pink areas are still showing through that's fine you don't have to worry about those if you don't if you don't miss them if you don't if you if you miss them you don't fill them you don't have to worry about it um, I think this is more hair here sometimes I can't tell until I, I work more of the color in again these little pink areas in her hair here don't have to worry about it you'll fill those in later I try to keep it um, clean but it, it in the end it doesn't matter and my workflow to make things go faster instead of filling this whole panel I'll jump to the next panel that has the same things change the color slightly so oh, ooh. and now um, I was using the mono the fill in mono pen to fill in these gaps on the hair here you can also use the bucket tool and turn close gap on and turn it up and it will not go past bigger gaps uh, let's go on this side so it's still let me turn that uh, my oops color margin off let's go up all the way see if that does anything so that filled I had turned close gap all the way and it did not breach those little gaps um, super useful I don't use it a lot I usually don't turn it up that much because sometime like this gap here I think would look better with an angle because it's hair more of a subtle change I think this one would look better with an angle like that so I don't want the program to make those decisions for me I want to make those decisions so I'll use close gap but I usually just use one two sometimes three and sometimes when it's turned up too much this gap here it'll it'll fill something like this it'll make a weird shape and you don't want that either so you got to keep an eye on that so I usually just uh, use the mono pen for most of this uh, like I think this will look better a little angle on there um, yeah up here in her forehead looks kind of funny so that's that's something I should have just used the mono pen for so I've got her hair let's jump to the next one no hair oh, I didn't get that bottom panel <laughs> um, oh here we go so this was the hair color I had, but you need to change it slightly so it'll be easier to select when you're actually coloring. Um, it's got a gap there somewhere. Oh, this one here. And I had missed the pink color in there, so you can just turn off the inks and it'll just fill there because it won't have anything to reference. Or you can um, turn off follow adjacent pixel and it will fill until it uh, it hits a different color which was already there so it just filled until it hit white um, but it ignores the the black lines and then just uses the other colors for a border but make sure you turn it back on or you won't be able to continue so I got that hair color let's change it a little bit don't need her eyes filled with the same hair color so I'll fill that A lot of gaps here but again I'd prefer to hand choose the shape that fills that uh, some wispy hair there pen is faster so this is where you have to start deciding uh, am I going to fill that with the bucket tool or should I use the pen and a little practice and you just start seeing those gaps a lot easier and deciding what to do uh, get a little practice seeing what the tools to do sorry I have a bit of a cold so I'm kind of sniffly off. so there we go and I just went from hair 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 next I'll do skin 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 shirt 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 um, but since I'm showing you how I my workflow for flatting I want to let's just stick with one panel and then I will pause the video finish flatting and then show you how to finish up after you finish flatting the whole page you have you have a few more steps you must do to, to create the flats but uh, I got a taxi cab here um, I don't have that previous page there's a taxi cab loaded so let me grab that and throw it in there it's on my desktop that was page 15 I believe uh, you can put any file you want I believe and that's not the taxi cab file uh, actually it's open here isn't it uh, it's page 16 so I uh, go back to import page 16 open it and it's in there it could be a Photoshop file it can be a clip studio file it can be a JPEG it can be whatever you want uh, I also use this for when I'm using a reference photo that I'm drawing from it's really useful 
Um, but in this case, I had the inside of the taxi cab in that last panel. So I'm just going to grab those colors because it speeds it up a little bit. Uh, the interior was here. Uh, let's see where that would stop here. Probably go here. So I would start making lots of decisions about how to color or where, where, how to, uh, how to do this fast and, and keep this, keep this looking good. There we go. Fill those in a minute. It's probably a seat belt or something I can't quite figure out what things are. Again, the, I'm using bits, not the original ink. So it'll look a lot clearer with the original inks after I finish, but, uh, I just keep coloring and then I'll figure out what I think that should be here a bit later. Um, looks like these uh, is inside of the door, but I want to be slightly different color. Again, I use um, specify by size on screen. So I'm using a small brush. And as I zoom in, it stays the same size on screen, which I just just was way used more uh, easy to figure out what I was doing with that. Another trip tick, another trick or tip is to use the shift button to make uh, straight lines. And this is a lot like how you'd be using the lasso tool in Photoshop when you're flatting. Um, really useful when some of these lines are just suggestions, but you want to continue the color, then you can use that shift tool and that speeds it up a bit, but I don't want to, I don't want to use that color there. Actually, maybe I do. No, I don't. Uh, I had the windows a nice light blue, so we can fill those in. And there's a gap. I think you guys are getting the idea of how you just kind of start to work into your into a flow here. I'm not sure if this is a window here or not, but let's uh, fill it in like it is and see how that goes. Uh, another tip. Usually you want to fill something in and then work your way out from around it. So, um, it'd probably have been easier to fill her face and then try to fill the hair and then try to fill the window around that. And that's pretty much the opposite of what you would do in Photoshop. You usually start big and then work into the smaller things. But, um, since this is a different flatting method, it, it, it's easier for me to find those gaps that you have to use the pen to fill in when you're starting at the a center object and work in radiating out from there. All right, I'm going to shut up and flat for a bit and see how far I can get here. Uh, actually, that was a good example. I filled here, and if you see this gap here, the paint came out kind of funny. And that's because closed gap is turned up, and it's trying to figure out what to do. So those are little things you want to keep an eye on. And once you start coloring, and you, like, for example, you you shaded that leg, and that color kicked out, you'd notice it right away. You'd be like, what in the world happened? Uh, let me turn that down, and there's no way it'll, it'll catch that gap then. But I'll just use the fill pen. Nope, little gap. There we go, purple top. My straps are fine. Um, eyes, just don't want to forget. Usually end up just drawing these in. And the lip was a separate color. Uh, I like to do all my rendering while flatting if I can. It helps speed things up later. And I think her skirts, yep, it's got a skirt color. There's a couple red highlights. And I think I had a brown shoulder strap. 
Uh, when I start using color more, I like to get that wheel a little bit bigger. And I like to have the color sliders just for that K. So if I like this taxi, it's most likely the interior is the same color, just different values. Um, and I'll just slide the K and then keep makes it faster. Um, since it's not straight up and down on the on the color box here, adding K. Um, but this will keep much more similar color, just making it lighter and darker. And so it's a lot easier when you're flatting. Let's get that in there. Okay, and I don't want to forget about her fingernails. They look good that color, but I might forget them. So let's make them brighter pink. The finger, yeah. And I'm trying to fill this door, but I should probably start at the shoe and work out from there, radiate out from the center. Uh, I believe she had, I've got some reddish bright shoes. to see here. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is a big thing about the um, bucket tool I really wanted to share. When you hold the bucket tool down and drag it, it'll fill each area that is that original color. So the original color in this square is pink. I holding it down, drag to the next one, it'll fill the next squares that are pink and it won't fill anything that's not pink. So there's a piece of pink right there. I can come over and then I got it too. Uh, really useful when there's a lot of cross hatching and, and um, checkered areas and stuff. Um, chair color there. Still not sure what that shape is. All right, and I want some variation in the door before I decide to color it. So I'll just take that and make it a darker. Or I could have used the black slider, might have been better. Um, sometimes the remote control for my, the quickie remote control button sticks. <laughs> I've done that for a while though. I don't, 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 uh, I don't want it in there either. Thing, and then even a little darker.
Uh, I don't know if you can see this on the video, but when you zoom out, some of the pink looks like it's showing through these lines. You zoom and it's not. Um, I'm not sure why that is. But when you zoom and you check, it looks okay. It'll be fine. Click and drag to get those two spots. Uh, the vial, I had it. I think it's the same one she had in a hotel room earlier. So I'm going to... I thought it was uh, medicine, but apparently it's not. But I'll keep the same color for story purposes. Okay, so that seatbelt should be a little different. Seatbelt clicker. Uh, bottom of her shoe might be a different color. It's the first time we've seen that. Probably be the same there. Um, and then if I didn't like that color, but it's in different places, the best way is to turn off follow adjacent. Um, I take that color, I just want to make it darker, and it'll fill in one click, that way you don't miss anything. And then make sure you turn follow adjacent pixel back on. Um, let's see how we're doing here. Turn off the bits, zoom in. This There's, there's no gray area, it's either one color or a different color. That is uh alias there's no anti-aliasing going on there which is good to check every once in a while because sometimes you mess up your tool or something um all right i still don't figure out that seat belt so i'll just make it uh cool gray and i think this is a overhead light drag and the handles are usually darker uh, I don't want to get too dark though because uh, it won't print well so I'll just go for a slightly different color and see if that shows up yep click drag across hit all those guys Uh, okay, I think all the items that I'm going to want to color are selected. Maybe the seats have two tones. Uh, I didn't do it earlier, so maybe I'll decide on that later. I'll just leave it as is. Okay, um, I'm going to just try to flat the whole page, and I'll figure out how to speed the video up so it'll look like speed flatting until I get to the end, and hopefully it'll just take a minute. Otherwise, I'll just cut this part out of the video and just edit together the end where I have to do the finishing part. So. Um, Maybe I can add some music or something when I do this too.